Welcome to Dare to Dream. So great to be here. As you know, last week, we had the amazing Dr. Laura Berman on the show, and I promised we were going to talk about sex, and we really talked about sex. You may have learned more about me than you wanted to know, but definitely, if you missed that show, you want to go back and capture the replay. YouTube.com slash Deb on the radio. I've got a channel on BBS Radio, Spreaker, Stitcher, iTunes, iTunes, TuneIn, Player FM, you get the idea. Or you could just Google Dare to Dream, Debbie Dashinger, make sure to spell my last name right and it'll pop up and you can choose where you prefer. I definitely recommend that you subscribe to this channel so it comes right into your box every week or you get a little nudge, nudge notice. And please leave a five-star review. Subscribe and leave a five-star review because what it does is it opens the door for other people who are really looking for this number one transformation conversation to find this show. So that's a little kindness that you can put out into the world. I want to thank my sponsor, Dr. Dean here, who's the co-founder of Access Consciousness and all the amazing energy work they do out on the planet to help heal and change and rearrange what currently is to be so much better. You can find out more about their classes, their books, their products, and their videos. They've got tons of free videos too. At Dr. Dane here, it's D-A-I-N-H-E-E-R.com, as well as accessconsciousness.com. And today we're going to be having another kind of energy conversation. And I've got Brandy Gilmore here with me. And I'll tell you a little bit about her before she fully comes on to speak on the show. And the conversation is really going to be about the new revolution in healing. And indeed, it's something that she herself experienced. She experienced it first and then created something for all of us. Brandy Gilmore is an internationally known speaker and body mind expert. She's most well known for her discoveries using the power of mind. The discoveries Brandy made were a result of her own devastating injury that left her disabled. Using a wheelchair or walker for mobility and in extreme physical pain for over six years. Without hope of recovery, Brandy began to research physical pain and other things. And what she found out transformed everything, including her health, her relationships, her business, her finances, and most importantly, her everyday level of joy. And due to the incredible results that Brandy experienced, she's been able to, demonst been able to demonstrate through her own body and life. She took her work out into the world to help others. She coaches top celebrities, entrepreneurs, Olympic athletes, CEOs, and groups worldwide in using their minds to transform their health and their life. And she's been featured on stages internationally. She also gave an amazing TED Talk I highly recommend you watch. And she's also being featured in four new upcoming documentaries to be released. You can find out more at brandygilmore.com. Welcome, Brandy, to Dare to Dream. Hey, thank you so much for having me here. It's such a pleasure to be with you. It's so great to have you. And I know that you are clearly a go-getter, clearly a big dreamer yourself. Were you ever in your life, either before your injury, during, or after, ever have you had the experience of being afraid to dream or go big? Oh, my God. Um, you know, I think that even my injury was a big one. Dreaming to get better. Um, when, when people say that you can't do something or you really don't believe you can, you're, you're, you're afraid to even think that you could do it, you know, to get your hopes up or to even tell people, you know, I could... I want to get better and or whatever it is, but absolutely. I mean, you get afraid to, afraid to dream, afraid to get your hopes up, afraid to think that you could step beyond what your current reality is okay. and really step behind it, beyond it. And I imagine with what you're saying that if you have disappointments along the way, I mean, for all of us, right, that's part of the journey. You're here, your dream is there, you go after it, and things happen along the way. 
and you have to supersede them to keep going. But for you to have the level of disability from your injury that you had, those disappointments, how big was that? You know, um, I think that uh, life-changing, life-changing. It was, you know, going up to my injury, I had always been somebody who was just very ready to live life to its fullest, very determined, very focused. I mean, the first time I won martial arts junior Olympics, I was like 12. I mean, I'm in the Hall of Fame for martial arts. I, I mean, I was just very focused, graduated high school, finished it early, started going to college early, bought my first house, 19. I mean, very, very focused and driven. And then this accident and accident and an accident, car accident, and then a fall. And it was like suddenly my entire life and everything that I had built and wanted just, it, it fell apart. And then when everybody tells you, you can't, you know, or, you know, you can't get better, you can't, you know, you, we, there's no way to get better. Um, you kind of just, you don't really think it's probably, you're afraid to actually dream to afraid to want to get better. And, and it's so funny. Like, even as I was, researching different things um to go okay let me look outside of the box after my doctor said that there was nothing they could do and i start looking outside of the box for answers like i, I remember like my family was like that's silly you know even anything that i was trying they were like you know that's silly and i think all too often in dreams like even when we look at spirituality people go oh that's silly some people do and everybody's like well if makes sense or you know the power of thought and and you know anybody who's on the cutting edge of anything uh, of change a lot of there's always a lot of people are saying oh that's not really possible so you know you get afraid to dream you get afraid to dream you also have failures and, and um you know i mean if you've seen that picture of me with the in the wheelchair at the wedding it, that was actually my sister's wedding that i was at and the only reason anybody got a picture of it uh, was because I was in her wedding, but my goal had been to get better mm. by her wedding. So ob <laughs> obviously I failed at that one. <laughs> so tell, give people a picture and an idea of what this was like. You have a car accident, then you have a fall. And, and what is the prognosis at that point? I, uh, I was first and foremost, I was in extreme pain, um, extreme pain. Um, heavy medications, uh, morphine every day, um, and I had been given a whole list of ailments. Uh, CRPS, which is complex regional pain syndrome, or also known as reflex sympathetic dystrophy, um, nerve lesions, spinal end plate fractures, spondylosis, I mean, just a whole host of, of injuries. And, um, and all of a sudden, I went from living this full life to uh, to a huge setback, you know, a huge set, which I, I was, you know, um, in extreme pain every day, hoping somebody had the cure. And, uh, and that was my life for years, just looking outside of the box for answers, trying to figure out something. Yeah. And you were talking a little bit about what it was like for you as a performer. You bought your house very young, you were successful young, you were in the Hall of Fame for being physical, so you've got all this, but tell us a little bit about what you were doing as a job, as a career prior to the injury. I had done network engineering, so I was into network engineering operations. Uh, that was my, uh, my job, I loved it. Um, you know, the whole technology boom, I was, I was part of that and really, um, and loved it, and loved it, and that's kind of, that was, really helpful i think that you know when we when we look at our dreams a lot of times when we when we want something it's it's kind of like when i was told you know there was nothing that was going to get me better and i wasn't going to get better you know there was this part of me that that had to think outside of the box and so we have to look at at, at dreaming and i think both the dreamer part of me uh, the part that wanted a bigger picture and also the analytical part that had some grounding to it was a good combination if that makes sense sure and so here you are being told this is the way it is there's really no cure for this in chronic pain take us to the time when the change happens when something 
first occurs inside of you that creates a light and a change out here? You know, I would say that there were, uh, there were several. I was, I was waiting for, um, it's like, you know, when you're injured and you're waiting for the next, um, the next cure. Like I was waiting, I, I, you know, when somebody tells you that you can't get better, you go, okay, well, I'm going to find another doctor who says differently. Um, and then you do that and you do that for a while. And as you keep looking and as I kept looking and everybody was saying, no, um, you know, there was nothing else they could do for me. It was, it was crushing, you know, it was just, um, it was, it was, it was so devastating. And so I kept going and, and there was this point where I was started looking outside of the box for answers and you know, you'd start eating and changing your food and diet and all of these things. And then you start looking at supplements and, and then meditation and, and all of these things, just trying to find the answer and still nothing was working. And I was just hoping that there was some type of, of cure. So her hoping that there was some type of, uh, something would be discovered basically that I would get my life back. And so finally I got this call that there was a research study at one of the hospitals that I could be going, that I was going to, that I could be a part of. And I was so excited. I mean, I thought this was the moment that I was going to get my whole life back. You know, you just kind of like, Oh my God, like this is it. And so I went in and when I got there, the doctor said, the, the research study, I got all in and I was all prepped for the procedure. And when I was prepped for the procedure, the doctor comes in and, and he's reviewing my chart. And he's like, we don't really expect you to get better. And, and at that very moment, it was like everything that I had wanted uh, was just it just fell apart and it was just like setback after setback after setback. And, and then I got to this point where I was like, you know what? Um, so I was laying there after, and as I was laying there and I just, I, I wanted to give up. I really wanted to give up. And, and then I had this epiphany. I was like, you know, but what about the placebo? And, you know, it just, it was like I started to uh, uh, think, okay, well, wait a second, we know it works because there had been this research, you know, up, to, up leading up until the research study, it was like, please don't get the placebo, please don't get the placebo, I want the real treatment. And, and, so, um, and so it was just this moment of going, okay, wait a second, what about the placebo? We know the mind has the ability, you know? And so that, that to me was an epiphany of going, okay, they say I can't do it, but let me look outside of the box and find uh, there, it's got to be possible. And if somebody else has done it, then you can do it. You know, it was just kind of that thinking if somebody else has do it, has been able to do it, you can do it. It makes total sense. I actually think that's genius because I've been there before where I've been in some kind of situation where it included a placebo and the same thought like, oh my God, I wish there was a guarantee you could give me that if I do this, you're going to give me the real deal. And of course, they don't even tell the doctors and nurses. So they have to keep it that above the board. It's really difficult. And then to come up with that epiphany and consider, oh, but there are people who get better based on a placebo. So what about that? So how did you start to employ that and see changes? Jody, you know, okay, you know what's fascinating about the placebo? Do you know that, there, uh, do you know that open label placebos also work? What does that mean, open label? Open label is where both the doctor and the patient know that it's a placebo. And they've been shown to have effective results. No, I didn't know. So, <laughs> interesting, right? Yeah. So, which is funny because, okay, so after I was like, because I wanted to give up. But then I was like, okay, if the placebo works, then there's got to be something. There's got to be, like the mind somehow has the ability. And I can't overlook that. I can't be like, well, yeah, the mind has the ability, but I don't know how to do it, so I'm gonna skip it. I was like, if the mind somehow has the ability, shouldn't I figure out why it has the ability and how can I make it work? And so, uh, and so then it began the whole process of trying to like believe I was healed and, you know, that didn't work either. So 
I had to figure out some things. But the more I looked at the mind, it was like looking at it for a moment. I mean, people with MPD, people with multiple personality disorder can have different ailments yes. in different personalities. Yes. Right? I was thinking, well, shoot, I just need a healthy personality. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, that's hilarious. <laughs> right? <laughs> and, I, and I jokingly say that, like, I, I would hate to have multiple MPD, multiple personality disorder, or DID, whatever they call it. So for anybody who does, I always want to be careful not to, you know, joke around about it. But at the time, I was like, well, if different personalities have different pain and different ailments, like, let me just get out of pain, because it was a lot of pain. So, and, and amputees, I mean, over 80% of amputees still experience pain. And I remember thinking, what, I could just, like, amputate a part of my body, and I'm still going to experience pain? There's an 80% chance that I'm still going to experience pain? And so, uh, I mean, what were you, what, you said you had a study, or you were in a placebo study also? Yeah, it's been a really long time, but I've been, and nothing life threatening, just so you know, like at all. It wasn't going to determine much. But um, yeah, I'm, in fact, just a couple of years ago, there was one, and I, I chose not to do it. Um, I decided not to do it. I would have had to fly to Washington for it. And I was very excited by the study on a lot of levels, and it actually could could have created potentially great change. But the moment they brought up the word placebo, I'm like, I'm out. I'm not going to spend the money for the travel. I'm not going to give you my time, which is money. I'm not going to give you my body, which is, you know, mine. Money. <laughs> Good luck with that. And that was it. Because that was so definitive to me. If I get on the placebo, it's not going to work. And if I get in the actual study and they give me something, I potentially could get really well. And that was it. Exactly. So, you know, at the time I was like, whatever, I don't care. But if you think about it for a moment, it's like the placebo has become a really cool measuring stick to see if pharmaceuticals work. But I was like, well, wait a second. If our brains just have that ability, if I could somehow figure it out, then I could still get better. So it was like this part of me that wanted to give up and just be like, I don't want to live in pain anymore. I'm so tired. I'm, I'm exhausted. I'm, and, and then, it, like, could I really even get better? You know, I think a lot of times, whenever we have dreams, whether it's dreams of getting better or dreams of whatever, you, there's sometimes this point where you just go, is it really even possible? And, and I, you know, whenever I felt like, yeah, I don't even know if it's possible, I, I just, I, I wanted to give up. But it was like, if other people have done it, or if the placebo works, then there's got to be something to it, you okay. know? Well, we're going to get to that in the second half. I do want to ask you, because I did see pictures of you with the cane, you in the wheelchair, and that was your everyday cane and wheelchair? That was the only way to get around? Cane, cane and wheelchair and bed. Hmm. What was up with the hair? I mean, I gotta ask you. <laughs> you this very spiky, kind of rocker chick short platinum hair what was going on there i mean it had to be you know what honestly i did <laughs> i before i got into network engineering operations all of that i did like a, a bit of modeling and uh some of it was for hair products and stuff like that and so uh so i had always kept my hair long and it was kind of just like this okay i want to like let my hair down or let my hair go. And so I actually did that prior to my injury. I was like, you know what, let me just, let me just do something. Cause I had always had long hair. I was like, let me just do something radical. Don't you ever, it's like live a little, you know? And I was like, okay, let me, let me try that. <laughs> once in my life, once in my life. Did you do it too? Yes, but I had a hairdresser. I was, I was an actress at the time and I was going to have headshots. I went in for a trim. And I've always had, you know, pretty substantial hair. She came around the back like this. Clip, clip, clip. I'm like, Whoa. Oh, I cried my eyes out. And I was mortified. It was like this terrible haircut. So I went to somebody in West Hollywood. I said, cut everything off. I've never had short hair. 
F it, just get rid of my hair. And uh -huh. I had much like you did this spiky sort of Liza Minnelli deal going on. Oh my God, I, w I wanna see a picture. <laughs> I have pictures because those are my headshots. I don't think I was quite lovely because I have really strong facial features, not my best look, but damn it, for three years I wore it like that. I was like, yep, let's get this out of our system. We can make <laughs> any other choice. So I feel you on that one. It's you have to like get it out of your system, right? Yeah, you got to rock it for a while, and then you know you know where to go from there. Growing, I bet you rocked it well. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> I will show you my pictures online. <laughs> Maybe I'll show them to everybody, but they were they're so fun. And um, I'm just curious before we go to break, your observation here. You were successful, then you go from this really traumatic experience. I mean, it's not six months; it's six years. That's solidifying. So to be able to find your way out to some kind of new thought pattern in life is pretty remarkable. And then to actually do something with it and get there and become here, so fully functioning and teaching others. So you've observed a lot of people, you work with a lot of people and you speak worldwide. What is in your observation, Brandy, what is it that holds most people back? Um, you know, when we start to look at, um, oh, I would say very simply. I'm sorry. I just want to add, add the end of that, holding people back from living the life that they really desire to live, dream of living. The easiest way to put it is, I would say there's, there's a, a few things, but one thing would be a lot of people don't really get very, very clear on what it is that they do want. And, uh, and I would also say that when we look at the mind, most people, what, what most people want, they don't really want. Meaning this, is that people will go, oh, like money is an easy one. They'll go, okay, I want to make more money. But if I make more money, people might judge me or people might criticize me or people might... Uh, I might be taxed more or something like that. So they'll have mixed feelings. Um, and that's one, and which is funny because if you take somebody who's been successful with money, they're like, are you kidding? Why would people think that? <laughs> and, <laughs> or um, people towards a relationship. I want a relationship, but I don't, but I do. And so what happens is there's subconscious links that get linked up to where part of you part of people want something and part of them doesn't. It would be like driving a car with one foot on the gas mm -hmm. and the other foot on the brake and wondering why you're not going very fast. And so a lot of people, even I, I mean, I work with all kinds of people with their mindset for, you know, uh, Olympic athletes or CEOs or, or people uh, that are working on expanding their success. And I mean, I even have a lot of, you know, we live in Hollywood. So I've worked with people who are actors or actresses who, uh, who want to be successful, but they're afraid to be seen and be famous. <laughs> and so they're there and they don't have that consciously, but at a subconscious level, it's linked up somewhere. And so, uh, what happens is as they're trying to move towards their dreams, they experience quote unquote failures. Mm. And the reality of it is, is what I've found in, in my work and working with people is that really a lot of the reason people will fail towards the dreams that they want is because they don't ever actually really want them. And, um, and so it's like, if, if I was driving to West Hollywood or Beverly Hills, you know, where I'm women, West Hollywood, so Beverly Hills. But um, if I was driving there and I was driving with my foot on the brake and I said, well, I failed to get there, you would say, absolutely, Brandy, <laughs> you had your foot on the brake the whole time. <laughs> Um, which is, of course, is how nobody drives here in LA with their foot on the <laughs> on the brake. Right. Yeah, the, the horn, but not the horn. <laughs> what <is it? laughs> right? Like a lot of people, they go between the like in most cities, they go between the gas pedal and the brake pedal. Here, we just go between the gas pedal and the horn. That's all you need. You know, you don't need the brake pedal. <laughs> So we're going to get more into the gist of the actual work that Brandy does and some of the things. 
that she may be able to illuminate for us. I'm actually quite looking forward to that. This is Dare to Dream Radio and Podcast. Thanks so much for joining us. You can become part of the Dare to Dream team. You can donate to the show at patreon.com slash dare to dream. You have a big purpose to fulfill. So I ask, what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? What would, you, what would it take for you to feel so completely free and bold that you would go after your dream and create it? That's why we're here. And Dare to Dream is always going to be free to you. Just think for the price of a cup of coffee or even more, you could change and alter this show. I can keep bringing you some of the most extraordinary guests as I have for 12 years and also help with all the machinations behind the scenes because it takes a lot to run this show business-wise. So thank you in advance for your support. Go to patreon.com slash dare to dream and I'll see you there. And if you're tuning in after I've started, I am Debbie Dashinger. This is Dare to Dream. And my guest today is Brandy Gilmore. To find out more about her, go to her website, her name, brandygilmore.com. So <clears throat> the work you do, Brandy, is about self-healing, essentially. And specifically, I've read that you work with empowered people, which is interesting because we're actually very disempowered right? When we're in these stuck positions. So talk about that. What are some ways that we can get unstuck and move forward? Ways to get unstuck to move forward. You know, self-awareness is huge. When we start to, um, I would say everybody's different. Of course, having a vision and, and getting that vision in, you know, we've heard that over and over again of having a vision, having a vision. Um, I, I would say one way to get unstuck is to is for us all to really bring in the awareness that our conscious mind is not running the show. Mm -hmm. And if people could really get that, I mean, neuroscience, we can look at it and it's estimated that the conscious mind runs, what is it, between, depending upon what study you look, it's basically less than 10%, five to 10% of the brain. The problem is, is that we walk around perceiving that our conscious mind is running the show. We feel like our conscious mind is, is making the decisions, is setting our goals, is, is achieving our goals, and we're operating from that space. Mm -hmm. And if we could really get in the awareness that to do anything, that we really need to get it in our subconscious mind, and the more we get our subconscious mind programmed to do what it is that we wanna do, whether it's healing or running a business, um, or whatever it is, going after whatever dream it is, when we align our subconscious mind with our conscious mind. How do we do that? I mean, we've got, we all know, I mean, we all know in a way that this is the issue, right? Because we see our reality and our reality is completely reflecting back to us what's going on in the subconscious. And unfortunately, the subconscious has made decisions and choices based on experiences or thoughts that became solidified. So here it is operating and creating this movie out here. And it's like, eh, I don't really want this movie anymore. I want to stop, for instance, having that same relationship over and over. And I'm really ready to up level. So what is it we can do here? in the subconscious to actually create a completely different result out here? Um, a few things. I mean, first and foremost, of course, getting a vision in and getting it in over and over. So that's basic and we've all heard that and we all go, yes, yes. But very few people actually follow through with that. So that would be one thing. Uh, another thing is, is targeting information specifically in the mind because a lot of people, even if they are getting the vision in over and over and over, um, if you go back to the car analogy, the vision is like the gas pedal of getting your energy and your mind of wanting to move towards that direction. So you're like, mind, let me get this in. Let me continue to move towards that. But there's also a foot on the brake. And if you say, oh, it doesn't matter. I'll just push on the gas pedal harder. doesn't matter that I'm holding on to the brake. Uh, that wouldn't be very successful. And so a lot of times it's really also 
I mean, the fastest way in the, in the way that I see people make, create the most rapid change is to identify the specific negative programming and shift that. And, and how did you do it? How did you like, cause that's pretty significant. You, you walk, uh, do you work out every day? I mean, I've seen you, so I, I know what you look like. No, I can never guess. I lift insane amounts of weights. I ended up, as I got better, I had like grandmaster champion bodybuilder, this bodybuilder couple that was like, we've never seen anybody do what you've done before. If you want to work out with us, you can. And I was like, totally. <laughs> Which, because I had, when I first went into the, started working out, I was not yet healed. I would go in with a walker and I would just hold weight and then I would leave because I hadn't quite figured out my mind yet. And I was just freaking determined. And, and so, but they, they saw the progress and they was like, what the heck are you doing? So it was, so it was fun. So, um, your question was, ah. yeah, what is it? So what, what did you employ? Uh, no. that got you from being yeah. in a hospital bed and this is the way you're going to live for the rest of your life to who you are right now, active and healthy and walking and fully functional. I would say uh, determination, determination, not giving up. I mean, there were several times when I thought, you know, it was several time the, times that I wanted to give up. And as far as your initial question, which had been about identifying the specific emotions in the mind um I, I would say that determination like i i there was things that i started learning about the brain about i started learning about how the brain works and and what i needed to really do and then it became a process of becoming aware of it so every it was a, it was quite a process for me i i'm not going to say it i did <laughs> i did it the best way or the most efficient way but it was um you know, it was really about identifying emotion. If we look at it this way, for example, um, if somebody's embarrassed, their face turns red. If somebody we've heard uh, is, has an anxiety attack, they have racing heart, shortness of breath, right? Sexual thought, sexual physical response. And so what happened in my case is I was looking to identify the specific emotion that was affecting my physical body. What I didn't realize at the time was that it was going to change my life. My whole goal had been to heal. And so when we really look at the emotions that we're not wanting to feel or we're not wanting to admit, whether it's for healing or changing our lives, that's, and we really authentically change those. That's where the shift occurs. And so, um, so what I started look doing was looking at things I didn't want to look at. Um, I started acknowledging emotions. I think we all have these things where things will come up in our mind, like you know, you, you have a fear about something or a worry about something, and you say, "Ah, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous," and you kind of shove it aside. And instead of shoving it aside, I reprogrammed it. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and so I, I addressed what was really going on in my mind. Wow. Is there a strategy that we can use to shift our core energy that we can employ? You know, it's, uh, yeah, as far as, I, I love it, core energy. Uh, core energy and, trans, and, transition, and transmission energy. So uh, when I start to think about, when we look at transmission energy, so a lot of times what happens is we've all probably done this before where we think of somebody and they call or you start wanting to manifest or think you know create something in your life and you think about it and you start seeing signs but for a lot of people that's like they don't actually it doesn't come to fruition they get the signs they get excited and then that's it and so for core energy, what happens is we not only need to think about something, but we need to think about it and really get it into the subconscious over and over and over again. Because it's, um, if not, it's just a, a single transmission. So in other words, core energy is, um, like you said, when you said that relationship that keeps going and keeps going, you're like, I want something different. Nobody's thinking, I would like to create that same terrible relationship again. <laughs> yeah. 
they're not thinking, right? That it's they're not consciously thinking that, but that's what's happening, right. and it's because it's in the subconscious. But then when people go to manifesting and creating their dreams, they go, well, let me just think about it up here. Let me think about it and visualize it and think about it and visualize it. And they see signs and they say, yay, but they never get it all the way into their subconscious mind. And that's where that core energy is. That's the energy that's emanating all of the time. You know, I find this fascinating because I do this, but I don't fully understand it. So on the one hand, the reason why this whole show was created over a decade ago was because I found a recipe to create dreams. And I started using it for all these things I wanted to create, do, be, and I was having success. And I got so excited. Radio originally was the way I got it out to the world. And then I started writing books and putting those out in the world, sharing this with people. You can too. So there's that piece, which is I would call a strategy, right? It's very technical in a way. And on the other hand, as you're calling a transmission or energy, there's this thing I do and I don't understand it because it doesn't work all the time everywhere. So for instance, with doctors, healers, uh, anything medical or beauty wise, I never realized this. It was my best friend who pointed it out and said, you're an amazing manifester. Like she started watching over months and years these um, gifts, basically, that kept coming to me. And I mean, some of them were extravagant and were life-changing, health-changing, inside-changing. And I just received and was thrilled. Most recently, very akin to what you're describing, Brandy, I, so I'm going to be really transparent here. I read Stephen Kotler's book, Stealing Fire. Uh, Stephen Kotler just recently was on the show. And one of the many things he talks about that goes on in Silicon Valley and Burning Man and all over the world, but is very game-changing, is plant medicine. Now, I had had a lot of judgments about it before, even Burning Man. But when <laughs> I read this and, I, and the changes that came for people, I'm, I got obsessed. It was like, I got to do this. And it's been a minimum of a year where I, I, I was doing things and hitting walls and trying on my own, like to get in clinical trials and all sorts of stuff. But I, I really am not good. They were looking for PTSD people. So I didn't let it go, but still it was running through me, but I didn't have like active pursuit. And I have had so many things concurrently happen in the last couple of weeks, but Suffice it to say, with one person coming to me and having extreme experience here and conversation, and then I was just recently on a hike, and I came down the wrong side of the mountain. It was really by accident. I didn't mean to do it, but when I came down, I was in out of a mountain into a parking lot in Burbank. <laughs> It was a picnic area parking lot. And I'm oh, no, it's a, off of Laurel. It's off of um, Laurel it's or? Burbank proper. Oh, okay. Okay. Virginia, actually. And I come down and I kid you not, here's some people hanging out, a group of friends at a picnic table, those people playing chess. And there's a freaking plant ceremony. I mean, it's <laughs> the Burbank Police Department. There's no way. I, I'm like, this is so for me, this is so for me. So I'm sort of hanging on the edges, listening to the medicine woman and all the things that people are sharing before they drink. And I'm like, this is crazy. They're doing it right here out in the open. It's for you, Deb, it's for you. And so I had really magnificent, crazy ass things happen like this. And I was like, I get it universe. You are aligned with me that I'm supposed to have this experience. Within 24 hours, I was supposed to have a conversation with an institution that's really well known. I'm not going to talk about it yet. Doesn't matter. The story is I was supposed to have a call with them to discuss this. The call didn't happen. And they wrote to apologize that they never got on Zoom. They said, don't worry about it. We already checked you out. 
And they are inviting me for an almost $8,000 week long experience in another country. I mean, I got that email and I was just like, I know <laughs> my best friend's going to be going again. You're a crazy manifester, Debbie. And now I embrace that. But I'm being very real with you, Brandy, that it's hit and miss. Like this stuff, yeah. In spirituality, new age, healing, da da da, or looking beautiful or something, working, whatever. <laughs> this shit comes to me. It just does with ease. Mm -hmm. And then there's other things that I would really like, like to manifest and it feels like I'm going through mud a little bit. Or if I do it, it's because I'm efforting. I'm really showing up to make it happen. So if you have a golden ticket <laughs> to make this work like this, I don't know. Is that possible? Can I, honestly? Yes. I see the most amazing things. And I would say that, okay, so this is what's fun. Um, <laughs> so one, one woman that I started working with, uh, CEO, uh, like on a good day, uh, or, uh, like when I started working with her, so she had been losing millions of dollars a year for several years, right? Uh, in her business. Okay. So, uh, so which is why she reached out and ended up connecting. And at the time when I connected with her, um, and, uh, we'll say she's in the beauty industry. We'll put her there. So, uh, which isn't exactly, but I just want to protect her. Have you me yet? I just want to. Uh, <laughs> I'll have to connect you guys. <laughs> Probably, I mean, you've already manifested that. <laughs> uh, but on a good day, or on a, on a good day at that time, she maybe make, I mean, like $25,000, if that, um, on a bad day, zero. Okay. You're talking about your day. Yeah. So, I mean, but her highest day so far this year, uh, in a day was 1.1. So you can see there's a little bit of a difference between the 25,000 and the 1.1. Okay. So even, okay. So, uh, a few years ago, like I would say uh, she lost about 2.5 million in her business. Uh, last year she did 137, uh, 137 million. Mm -hmm. So, uh, GP. So, uh, big difference, but point being is that what was fun is we started like on a day. So she, we shifted things and then she would make like, you know, it was up to like 200,000 a day, 220 a day or something like that. Um, and so we do that and she'd all of a sudden have like a day that was like 15 grand. It was like, okay, well, what was off when your energy? Oh, this is off. Or she'd have like a three or four days. She'd call me and be like, hey, like <laughs> what's happening, blah, blah, blah. Oh, this is what I see. You want to shift this. And she'd shift it and her money would go back up. <laughs> and so every time that I see people that what they're not wanting, like there's, there's a block of some sort. And so like, in other words, like you said, like in certain areas, you're like, yes. And like, look at you, you're all, you're all about beauty. And you're like, of course I can like bring in beauty and headshots and all this. Like that's your, that's your gig. I mean, not your whole gig, but I mean, you, you got it going on. Right. And so, <laughs> but there's certain areas, it's like some people can are amazing at money mm -hmm. and they're terrible at relationships True. or they're amazing at relationships and their finances are terrible. Yes. And, Right? <laughs> you're like, you're like oh, yes. And you're like, oh my God, this is people. What's that? I know these people you're mentioning. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And so what it is, is it's not like we manifest one thing and, and then we're set. Every, we have so many different links to different things. And so I've, I've, and so it's just about identifying. So all of the time I'll have people as far as what I work with, with in business and stuff like that. Um, whatever it is that's blocking them, that's what we just identify what it is. Oh my God, I had this one person, this one guy that I worked with, um, another business, we'll say it's automotive. <laughs> Not really, but we'll say it's automotive. But either way, his company was expanding so fast and he had a burn rate every month between 50 to 75K a month. So burn rate, meaning he was spending, you know, but spending more than he was bringing in which uh, 
it wasn't a bad thing because his company was just growing so fast. It, they were making more in contracts and all of that, but there was just this burn rate and they needed investors to be able to expand. He had this, when he started this company, he had this really a lot of pride in going, I started my company all by myself, no investor money. I did that. So he had so much pride that he started it with no investor money and all these things that when he did go to one investors, he couldn't seem to find a single investor in this company that was just booming. And I was like, oh, well, let's shift to this. And we shifted a couple other things in his mind. And literally, he had an investor in like <laughs> three weeks. Um, that uh, several million, several, several million dollars investing. So do you teach this in group settings? Is it only one-on-one? -on -one? How do you work with people? Uh, for, for health, a lot of times I do, I do uh, group settings and a lot of times for coaching and stuff like that, I do one-on-one. -on -one. And what happened was from my injury, as I was going through my injury, network engineer, all of these things, very analytical, after I healed myself, I realized that I could feel what other people were feeling. Hmm. And so what makes it really easy <laughs> is that I can feel what other people are feeling. And so when people aren't manifesting what it is that they're wanting or they're stuck in a dream of a certain part of their life or whatever, I'm like, oh, well, this is the block that I see. And they're like, oh, my God, I didn't even think of that. And then so we shift it. So it's, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Woohoo, Brandy. I love it. I love it. What a great career to be in. Uh, see? Everybody agrees in the house. Everybody agrees. <laughs> Even the puppy says, right on, Brandy. Oh He's so God. cute. <laughs> <laughs> but, right uh, on cue. But the thing is, is when you, when you see it, you, you just, you can't help but be in awe with, with us as human beings and go, it, it all makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like it's not, it, it all makes sense. And, uh, it's it's incredible what we're capable of you know you know yeah well we'll be back in just a minute and we're gonna dive just a little bit more before the end uh dare to dream listeners i've got a special for you only from thinkific gosh if you haven't heard of them they literally are running platforms for the companies all the companies you know the biggest companies also the biggest names in our industries i've made a really unique deal with them and it's available only to you so what do they do they create market they sell your products programs online courses for you mine was just developed oh my god it's so beautiful i'm so happy it looks like a website by the way and it's not it's actually their platform but it looks so beautiful and it does everything all i did drag drop i actually paid everybody somebody to do the rest because i don't like to do graphic designs and stuff so they made it so beautiful but so easy and so gorge that's all i can say you got to check it out if you want to sell things and you want people to be able to go to a place that's not a landing page you're paying a gazillion dollars for i'm going to offer you the first three months free on this link only, man, grab it. It's thnk.cc slash Deb. And for you only, Dare to Dream, you can get your three months free and just start selling your stuff. They start charging you after that, which is actually very nominal, by the way. It's very inexpensive. You've already paid for it if you've just sold one course. So go forth and proliferate that's all i have to say and if you're tuning in i'm speaking with brandy gilmore she made a miraculous recovery and today she generates attention worldwide by what she's sharing with us how to get out of physical mental and emotional pain in record time so hmm, let's see there's so many things i want to know what it means to you to be in a fully functional body today. I don't even know if you presence that. But okay, what so that? This is what's fun, is that, <laughs> you know, first and foremost, as I got better and I was working on running and it, it just, I was in tears, all happy tears all the time, even like, I mean, little things. And, and Running again, and by the way, if you're working on running again, uh, note to self, which something, <laughs> remember that you have to know how to stop. <laughs> so uh, that was that was uh, something I didn't pre-think ahead of time, you know. <laughs> but I mean, 
this is this is a fun part is that um as i was getting better you go grocery shopping and you end up going down the freezer section and you see yourself walking by and you're like, Oh my God, those are my legs. I'm walking, <laughs> which is funny because I have, uh, and the reason I laugh about that is because I have people that I've worked with who they'll have the same exact experience and you end up in tears in the freezer aisle. <laughs> like oh, uh, one woman that I worked with, she was completely supine bedridden, uh, couldn't sit up, uh, for six years. Um, two kids and it just, I mean, just this crazy story. And, uh, and now she's running marathons completely undiagnosed from everything, all of these things. And, and it was funny cause on the group coaching that I teach the healing yourself and all of that, she was like, Oh my God, the freezer section. And she was like, I was sitting there just bawling my eyes out in the freezer section <laughs> because you end up seeing it. It's yeah. It's just, uh, it, to be honest with you, it's amazing and incredible. And, and it, it, it's like a whole different life. I just, I, I literally feel, I think that I just feel happy all the time. Like I thought, I used to think I knew what happy meant and happy meant just being okay. And, and, you know, just being okay. Like I was like a normal person, so to speak. And, and then I could go do this and I could laugh with people and connect with people and live life and all these things. But happiness is a glow on the inside that's just there throughout my day all of the time and it's just like i'm i'm, ha I'm happy all of the time and, and i think that that it, it's just genuinely just happy and that feeling i don't know i mean it's, well, it's you've accomplished a lot right i mean this is pretty big what you did before and what you did by virtue of your accident to become functional and fully changed so what are your next dare to dream? What are your future dreams and goals? What are my future dreams and goals? Um, I want to change the way that people look at healthcare. There is so much that we are overlooking. So I've been able to, uh, to take people who are in chronic pain back to back to back out uh, and show them how to use their mind to get out of pain in minutes, even under medical equipment, so you can see it. And what's brilliant is that when something is going on with our health, it's actually a message that helps us to change our life. So just like when I said, you know, my whole goal was to get better and I started looking at my mind for healing. And what happened is it changed my life. And so the way that I see it is that whatever's going on with our health is the most important thing that we need to know to change in our life. And when we do, it changes our outside situation. So in other words, I'll have somebody who's changing an elbow issue and all of a sudden that financial issue that they've been working on, that they couldn't, that they've been banging their head against the wall, are, are sort of like our bodies are telling us something. It's like, it's like if we were driving a car and the check engine light came on and you said, no, I'm too busy to handle that. I want to drive to my destination. Mm. <laughs> but it's... It, it, it's it's more than that it's like it's like if your shoulder was hurting and your shoulder is saying hey i know the the answer for that relationship issue and you're like not now i have to handle my relationship and it's saying but i i know the answer for that relationship issue you're having and you're like not now i need to deal with my relationship or not now i need to deal with my business it's trying to give us that information mm. and when we take it in and we process what our body is trying to tell us hmm. it changes our life Very it's cool. huge. Yeah. that's how i got into working with people with their dreams and and all that because i was like well let me i want to help people with their health but what i realized was that it changed their entire life and i could then i could see it and then what happened is then i'd help people and they'd have these incredible recoveries and then i didn't want to be like well you're healthy i'm going to stop helping you with your dreams because then they're like Oh my, because what happens is when they see that, yeah, they see they can heal themselves. They see that their whole life has changed. Then they go, oh my God, what happens when you achieve dreams? Right. You want to set more. Mm -hmm. And they're like, okay, well next. And I don't want to be like, well, you're healthy now. So it's not like, you know. I just started. The adventure's just started. I mean, you took care of the obstacle. Now let's really play. So um, it, we're right here at the end. I, re I have to end the show. But is there something quickly you'd like to tell the listeners? I mean, 
probably the same message that you're saying all the time of, of just dare to dream and how amazing we really are. And, um, and that it's just, it's been a, a pleasure being here and, and I just adore you. And, uh, <laughs> thanks uh, for sharing your brilliance, Brandy. And I'm so glad you're here with us. I'm so glad you did what you did. I end today's show with this quote from Brittany Bergunder, hold yourself back or heal yourself back together. You decide. Next week on Dare to Dream, I'm featuring, coming back a second time, Dr. Bradley Nelson. I cannot wait. He just re-released his book. It's all revised, The Emotion Code, with a new forward by his friend, Tony Robbins. And oh my God, the emotional energies. This is actually a perfect conversation that keeps happening. The emotional energies that literally inhabit your body. So you totally want to tune in. And you can subscribe once again to this channel. It is yours for the taken, youtube.com slash Deb on the radio. Go to my website, debbie-shinger.com, and all the replays are there. Thank you so much for joining us today on Dare to Dream. And remember, the secret of success is having the courage in the first place.